In this video, we'll be going over SCL Navigator's features and functions to allow you to create, analyze, troubleshoot, and verify your SCL files for 61850. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new file, and we can do that by going over here to the Getting Started page and clicking the specified version. I'm going to be doing a 2.1. Then you'll want to give it a name. You'll be able to set a context for this, such as who created it and your version number. I'll leave it default. And then we can get started. So by default, what we've done is we've created an IED with the name template, a single access point, and then a logical device within that template IED. We've also pre-filled this with an LLN0 and LPHD. You can navigate around this file by interacting with the line numbers or by opening and closing different sections. You can also jump to different sections by clicking it in the navigation pane. This is an active editor, so you can interact with it by interacting with individual fields or by right-clicking and interacting with the context menu here. For instance, we could add a data set, a report control block, unbuffered report control block, different inputs, goose control blocks, sampled values, and the rest that you see here. We can also add new logical nodes by going to the logical node library and interacting with this library here. For instance, if I wanted to open up the 6150-7-4 and go down to, say, the switch gear, I could grab an XCBR and drag that onto the template here. This will bring up a context menu for the logical node that we drag over. You can give it a prefix and obviously an instance number. You can see all the different data objects that can be inside. Then if you hit next, it'll bring up all of the fields that are either mandatory or optional. You can go in and select which parts of this logical node you would like to bring in. and then click Finish. With that, we have a new logical node within our template IED. Now, we can come in here and add individual things as well. We can delete what we just added, or we can change the template. Once we have that logical node, we can now access the data attributes inside of it. So if I go back to LLN0 and right click and do add, we can go ahead and add a data set. From that data set, we can now see our XCBR. If I open it up, you can look at the things like the position of the XCBR or the health, the behavior. So if I wanted to include the position inside of a data set, I could just click this checkbox here and click add. Of course, you can go into your other logical nodes and add other things as well. You'll want to give it a name and hit finish. Now, inside of the LLN0, we see we have that new data set. Once we have a data set, we can do things like adding a report control block. So you right click, add, let's do a buffered report control block. And let's go ahead and select new data set. That will allow us to have access to the data set I just configured. Now, we have gone ahead and added a new logical node to our template ICD. The data attributes within it, such as the breaker position, have now been added to a data set called new data set. And then we've created a report control block called new report control block and use that data set. Of course, all of this is editable, and you can go back and change the names or the data sets as you need. You can also go into different attributes here, such as the data set, and if you're looking specifically for this position, you can right-click, navigate to, data, and it'll take you directly to the line number of where that position is. 
And just with these very simple features, you have learned how to create or edit ICD files. So now that you've learned how to create your own SCL file, let's look at a pre-existing one and see what we can learn from it. So we can do that by going to File, Open SCL File. I'm going to select an SCD file, which contains multiple IEDs. From here, I'm just going to go ahead and collapse to keep things a little more organized. And now you can see all of the different IEDs over here on the navigation pane, as well as in the main window. So now we can move inside of one of our IEDs, the access point, I'll move into the server, and we can see there are two different protection logical devices in here. I'll go to the first one, and we can see all of the logical nodes inside of that logical device. For more information on what this does, I'm going to go into the LN0 and see that there are three different data sets. Now this is a file created by us. And so we've named it in a specific way. So you can see this data set has the DS to start with, that stands for data set. Then we have buffered report control block or goose control block. And sure enough, these data sets are used in a report control block that is a buffered report control block or goose as well. If we want to go into, say, the goose, we can see all of the IEDs that are subscribed to this goose. So it looks like D1, TX1, SCU1. So I can go out all the way back to the top, D1, TX1, SCU1, open that up, go down to the access point, open the server, there's a control logical device in here, and then you can see all of the logical nodes. Now if I go down, I can actually open each of these logical nodes here and see there are different inputs from not only that one goose control block, but all the other goose control blocks it may need to be subscribed to in order to get the data it needs for its protections. So that's one way you can see how the data will flow around your device. You can also take a look at the communication section, of course, and see all of the different access points. You can open them up individual and see their IP addresses, their gateways, any of their qualifiers, any of the information like that. And of course, if the device sent to you um, is not properly configured, you can come in here and make changes just like always. After you make any of the changes that you need to make, you can go in and do file and do a save as to export your file out and be ready to import by your individual IEDs. But before you do that, we recommend running this Rise Clip Verifier. What this will do is open a third tab here, and if you click Run Verifier, it'll go through the Rise Clip tests and verify that your file is properly configured. That way, if you have made any changes or if you've gotten a file that you aren't confident in, you will be able to go back and figure out exactly what's wrong with it. For example, this file that we're looking at seems like it has a lot of work to still be done, as there's 360 errors, there's three informations, and 44 warnings. If you'd like to learn more about these information, you can go down into the individual results here and see the majority of them are incorrectly map errors. If you want to look at what those are, you can go down and it will give you more information on that. And you can even click on it and it'll take you directly to the line number where that error is. Then you would just come in here, make the change that you need to do, and then you can rerun your tests. Now let's take a look at where Navigator fits into the IEC 61850 engineering process. If you have not seen this slide before, this is how Triangle Microworks envisions the 61850 engineering process from the conceptual and design phase to the factory acceptance, and finally to commissioning and maintenance. It is important to note that Navigator does not replace a conventional system configuration tool such as Helix, but can be used in conjunction with them. And in a pinch, it can also be used to temporarily create SCL files for IEDs or simulation tools. As you can see in the diagram, Navigator's compass is scattered around the engineering process as it can be used in many different situations. Most IEDs, simulation, or testing tools need a configuration file in the form of an SCL file. Navigator will verify these SCL files functionality before moving on to the next step. 
To represent this, we have the SCL Navigator's icon after the System Configuration Tool step, but before our Simulation and Monitoring Tools, DTM and Test Suite Pro. Similar videos as this one can be found for more information on both our DTM and our Test Suite Pro tools.